97.1, The Fan. Thanks for coming. Just guys that played well in the game uh, last Saturday. Uh, champions on offense are quarterback JT, uh, wide receivers, played well. Paris, Austin Mack, and KJ. Uh, running back, obviously, uh, J.K. Dobbins played very well with 172 all-purpose yards, 172 yards and 118 after uh, contact. Billy Price, Brandon Bowen, Isaiah Prince, and Michael Jordan all played well. Uh, tight end, uh, it's good to see him, great a champion. Uh, Marcus Ball. And then uh, co-players of the game on offense were Jamarco Jones, played his, very well, and Terry McLaurin, who uh, had four catches for 50, 53 yards. However, his blocking was phenomenal. Uh, downfield. On defense, you had uh, uh, Nick Bosa, Sam Hubbard, Draymond Jones, and Sprinkle in the defensive line. You had Jerome Baker at linebacker. You had Denzel Ward, Kendall Sheffield, and Damon, Damon Arnett. I told Kerry you had three corners play uh, champions against the wishbone. It's a hell of a job. And then they did Eric Smith and Damon Webb, uh, great champions. And player of the game was Tough Borland, 41 uh, and 10 tackles, two assists and a tackle for loss. On uh, kicking, we uh, obviously uh, appreciate those guys that are selfless and go very hard. Denzel Ward down to punt on the one yard line. Amir Reap, uh, kickoff tackle inside the 20. Jeff Okuda, kickoff tackle inside the 20. Paris Campbell, 40 yard, uh, very good punt re or kickoff return. Our Thursday race winner, we call it, and that's just for effort. And that's Justin Hilliard. And the player of the game, special teams, is Keandre Jones, played very well. So uh, uh, on to the next one, and I'll answer your questions for you. Middle, Dave. I just have a couple questions about middle linebacker. Uh, first of all, will Chris Worley play this week? How's he doing? He's questionable. Oh, yeah, he's questionable. And Tough Borland, you mentioned player of the game. I know it's just one game, but after a game like that, where does he fit in, into the equation? Uh, you'd have to ask the defense coaches. Obviously, he's uh, very important to me because he's my middle shield on punt and very good on kickoff return. So uh, very valuable member and a uh, great kid. His uh, personality matches his name. He's a tough guy. One more real quick one about that. Is there a chance... Have you guys had any conversations with the defensive coaches about moving Worley back to outside linebacker and using Tough Borland as the middle linebacker? Uh, you would have to visit with those guys. I meet with them later today. We'll have those conversations. Second row left, Ari. Urban, when you guys are preparing for a football game, you know, from Sunday to Monday, how much of your uh, thought process is 100% on the next game? And do you ever think about making changes or doing things that you might say, hey, this will pay off in week nine. Sure. Um, how? What's the balance there, and how do you? Well, you're always growing. and you know, we did some things in this game a little differently than we have offensively. So we're always, especially when it's not working. When it's working very well, you don't make major changes. But obviously, we are still work in progress on offense. And um, so, yeah, we're. As a matter of fact, ironically, this morning we had a, a very serious conversation about this plus down the road. How do you complement these plays have been working very well? And so, yes. And when you play opponents, and not to disrespect your opponents in any way, but you're playing teams that you're expected to beat by a lot. Do you ever use these weeks and these, like about a month now of games that you're expected to win by a lot to experiment in game? I mean, does that ever? Uh, we have. We're not at that point. We're not that uh, experienced. So, you know, the question was more appropriate about middle linebacker because who's, you know, um, you have a true freshman. I know he's playing well, but he's a true freshman right now, starting at tailback. You, you know, so it's not. We're not. I have had those conversations. We're certainly not having that now. Front row right, Austin. Urban, since I asked about getting Dwayne some playing time last week, I would just want to follow up. How, how do you think he did, and how much value do you put? Well, in that was inappropriate. I didn't introduce my my dude there. Jake, what's up, man? Good. Day. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> just hanging out. Yeah. Good to see Jacob and his family. All right, I'm sorry. He's replaced me, so. Yeah. Oh, I'd love that. Working for the Big Ten Network this week. He's replaced you? Yeah, I'm, I'm out. I mean, so they got my letter. That's cool. <laughs> it took them five years, though, so. Yeah. Getting, getting Dwayne out there, I know you said you wanted to do that last week. How much, how much stock do you put in 
those late game scenarios and what what did you kind of learn about him there? Oh, I thought he played very well. You know, uh, I wanted to let him keep going, but that was my call to, you know, I don't want to score it at the end there and not uh, in that game. And, uh, you know, Joe is about ready to come back, so we got to make some decisions. Who's the first one in there? Both, you know, last year was very important to get Joe in the game, and he did pretty well when he was in there as well. So that, that is so important for uh, backup quarter spec spot. Because the, the, there's maybe less pressure in that when you put those guys in in the fourth quarter and the outcome seems decided. Do you give those more value when you evaluate it than practice reps, or what's the evaluation? Much more value. And like you said, there's not as much pressure. At some point, I, you know, I've done that before where you put a guy in in the second quarter of a game, you know, and uh, we're not at that point yet, but you'd like to do that. Front row, middle, Bill, or Benoit? Uh, I already kind of touched on this a little bit, but <coughs> you're in a stretch now where you're playing opponents that on paper look overmatched. What do you want to get out of this period of the schedule when you know what's coming up later, but you know where you are right now as a team? Like I said, there's been times, I don't know if I'd say it in here, there's been times where in my mind and maybe a couple key members of the staff, we started having those conversations. We are not there yet. You know, we got so many issues to fix that were exposed early in the season. And so what am I trying to, we're trying to get better and better win games. That's all, we're not at that point. In your mind, what are the areas that you think are absolutely critical to get? Pass defense and continue growth on offense. And punt return has still been non-existent. You know, it's no one's fault. Just, we haven't had very many opportunities to return a punt. Uh, punt team I'm very pleased with. Uh, kickoff coverage is a mess right now. You know, we, can't, we don't have a kicker that can kick the ball. If you notice, one almost went out up in the seats. So we're, there's plenty of things that have a lot of issues that we have to get cleaned up, and all our focus is on that. And it's, it's young players that, you know, so I'm thinking about Nuremberger being our kickoff guy. Those are the questions that, those are all the things our focus is on those. Front row left, Bill. Urban, uh, you were very complimentary of the scout team on your radio show. Yeah, they're incredible. Week. Yeah. I wanted to ask you specifically about Tate, because there are a lot of teams who have to maybe put a walk on or even put a guy from a different position at quarterback. What is it meant for you guys to have a player like Tate be the scout team quarterback? We won the game because of that. Um, they took a ball, you know, we've, you know, you saw our rivals and, and other teams that play service academies. You know, there were 700, over 700 reps that went into this. Coach Gianna was telling me. We started this in March, and they took the ball 99 yards on us in 18, 18 plays, nine, nine and a half minute drive, and that's not uncommon. Um, it's not uncommon to have 40 plays in a game against a team like that. When I was at Notre Dame, that happened many times, and we lost Air Force one year because of that. So. Uh, the amount of time and effort that went into it, also the amount of time and effort that went into preparing Josh Myers and Wyatt Davis were our starting guards on the scout team. And Tate Martell was playing quarterback. That was legit. And Coach Shannell had a nice visit with our team about that. And no one appreciates it more than our players. And then I guess in, in general, how has Tate handled being in that role? And, and when he's out there, like, do you see flashes of what he can be? I, I really do. I'm, so, I'm really excited for his future. You know, I... I saw a player in the spring without getting too personal that was worried about this, worried about that. It was probably social media, whatever, you know. And it happens in high school when you're at a very successful program and you're a very successful player. And I've seen a guy that has ripped his chest open. I hope it stays that way. And he's, I'll do anything to help this team win a game. Those guys are the guys of careers that take off. The other stuff, you know, I'm going to transfer here, transfer, go do a research project and see how many people fail when they are being given bad advice. So he's handled it very well. Right, right, right. Over here, Jacob. Herman, how do you think uh, JT played this game versus the Oakland game? <laughs> you had to read that question? <laughs> Try it again. Don't read it. Go ahead. Urban, how do you think JT played versus the Oakland game? Uh, played much better. I think the surrounding cast was uh, much better. Uh, obviously, you know, Oklahoma's one of the top couple teams in America and we, we didn't play as well. He didn't play as well, but uh, all of us did not play as well or coach as well. Uh, front row middle, second row middle, Rob. Uh, Urban, you want improvement obviously, but you know the perfection is not possible. You know that. But there's so much noise out there, expectation. How do you find contentment 
you personally and as the program, you know, not meeting perfection even when it's out there. I mean, JT can, he can go 19 for 20 and there's noise. I've, uh, that used to be a major issue with me. Uh, it really is not. And you know, to say I'm not human and I don't hear it once in a while, I try to avoid it. Like, uh, you know, I'm the first guy that, you know, I'll check recruiting and check some things on my uh, iPad. When something's not going well, I just avoid it. Like, it's, you know, I ask our players to, and you, it's hard to at times. But it's also, we made a decision to come to Ohio State and a top five program. And what's the expectation of life in the big city? You know, if you don't want to, it's an easy answer, JT, leave. You know, we won't let them, or it's an easy answer for me, leave. You know, don't, don't do it anymore. And uh, that's, so it really, anything external is far less than what's going on in internal, is the way I look at it. And come out to the practice field and watch the grind, the work, so we don't have uh, bad things happen. Second row middle, uh, Ryan. You mentioned before the Indiana game that Demario McCall was dealing with, like he was a little banged up and you know, needed to do some more work. I was just wondering I mean, where he stands with that, and if you know it's just a matter of other guys being better than him as far as him not getting on the field. Not ready to say that yet. Uh, he certainly needs to improve. Uh, he has not been at full speed. He's much closer than he was. I'm going to try to get him in a game uh, and determine if he can go. You know, he had a tough injury, and for those kind of guys at that groin. Uh, uh, abdomen injury that he had, so he's getting better. Far left, Lori. Uh, Coach, a couple of your players thought that you would revisit the Oklahoma film yesterday. Um, one, I, I wonder if you did that, and two, in a vacuum, is the best time to coach a kid right when the sting of a disappointment is, is greatest or when he's a little emotionally removed from that and you're in that move-on stage from that process you discussed last week? That's a great question, and first we did, uh, not on offense. Offense, we hit it all last week because it was similar type, de some similarities on defense, but offense, uh, defense, and I thought Greg did a good job. We, you had to put it away. You had to put that away, and so they spent all day yesterday on Oklahoma. Um, graded the effort and rewarded the effort in here with me and the team, and then they went to work, and they'll continue to work on because now we're going to see another spread offense. And then the second part of the question was, oh, and this, that's very good. Uh, when do you, do you browbeat them? Do you beat them to death when you lose as opposed to, no, it kind of depends on the player. If it's a player that needs to be hammered and because of effort, but those players, you know, we're fortunate. I have good guys. If it's a bad guy, they won't stick around here very long. And you have to inspire, motivate. I think I said that last week too. Our job as a coach after a loss is to fix it and inspire and motivate because they're, uh, it's very hard on them. Saw you get you know ball screens, quick passes a lot on Saturday. The ball in your hands was that a game specific thing, or was that when you look at things you need to do, get the ball in Paris games? Well, for example, you know we are trying so hard. The teams are playing pretty soft. You know, like that they were, we tried to throw a couple, and everybody's just playing so soft. So kind of the game was we have a full uh, allotment of a game plan. If they're playing here, you'll see more of these. If, you, if they're playing there, you'll see more of what you saw Saturday. So we have that available, and we're going to have more of that available. And it depends on how the game's going. And as, if you remember how the way Army was playing, this played is smart. Try to t keep everything in front of you. Don't let anything over the top. And we knew that. And uh, I thought JT and everybody managed it very well, which means it's going to be a lot of horizontal passing. And if it's the tighter the defense, you'll see more vertical passing. Saw him wow. a little bit more like Curtis Samuel last year. Is that your decision? Yeah, for yeah and he's, uh, you, everybody can see it. I'm just so upset that we had another holding call. But one thing about that, we had three holding calls, and it wasn't because of late. You know, one was very bad technique. The others were just incredible effort. You just got to let go of the jersey. And uh, we had one very questionable call uh, on our far left, but uh, effort was great. But Paris, to answer your question, Paris has that kind of skill set. Back to Borland, anything about his recruitment or his rise through the ranks that stands out to you? Oh, uh, I just love, Tuff and I are very close. His family's awesome. You know, his dad played at Wisconsin. And I always ask him about if he's related to the other, that great linebacker they had a couple years ago. And he gave me some mishmash answer about, I think, I'm not sure, but I think, you know, I don't, 
So that's the only thing kind of funny about that recruitment. But he, he's he's everything you think he would be. Great kid. Right, Tim. Yeah, Urban, uh, J.K. Dobbins, once you hit a home run, as the old saying goes, did you notice even with 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 Zeke, does it kind of change down the road the way defenses kind of Oh, yeah. I mean, in what way? Well, it's a threat of, you know, last year, I remember even on the field, people would point out where Curtis Samuel was, the defense would come out and say, just, you know, your defense, you have to keep that guy in front of you. J.K.'s not there yet, but J.K., you know, everybody's starting to see what he can do. Are you – so, you know, we've asked you this a couple of weeks now, but are you surprised by what you've seen out of him? I mean, obviously he didn't play last year because of the ankle or whatever, you know, the injury. But what, what is, I guess, what has surprised you about him? Oh, uh, well, he's from a very small town, so I think I don't want to see he was an unknown. But, you know, obviously we kind of had a strong opinion of him. We wanted to have it verified as a senior, and he couldn't. So there was a little unknown. I remember going down there in January or December, and – and great people, great people in the town, and but you're just, there was some bit of unknown. Oh, very much, you know, it didn't. You wanted everything verified on senior tape, and you got nothing. I think you got hurt in the first play. And uh, spring, I saw glimpses of it. Fall camp is when I saw. Watch out! This could be a really, really good player for us. And so now, how do you how do you play that with him and Mike? Because you know, there, there's that thinking that 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 prime running back needs to get some carries uh, to get a, to get a role going in a game, but. How do, you, how do you play that down the road now? Well, everybody, you know, it's not that Mike is a lost soul around here. He's one of the few freshmen. I want to say three or three freshmen ever to rush for a thousand yards as a freshman. Uh, so he's very uh, critical for us as we continue to move forward and conference play coming up in a few weeks. So we're going to need him at full strength. He's still not full strength. And so we just have to make sure we get him full strength. And he's, you know, uh, I can tell you that Mike Weber two years ago, how did I say this politically correct? It was a hard time for me to walk across the street for him. That's, that's not too rough, is it? <laughs> um, and then his growth in one year, and then by the time this spring and this summer, he was one of our hardest working guys on the team. His commitment to our program is incredible right now, so he'll be rewarded once he gets back full speed. And final question, Doug, front row left. Urban, can you delve a little bit more into JT just running the offense, making decisions in that zone read. I think it's easy at this point maybe to take that for granted with him. Why is he good at that? What makes him good at that part? But we know that's so important to this offense. And just yeah, why, why is he – he makes it seem so natural sometimes. Yeah, he's a very intelligent player. He's a guy that works extremely hard. He puts more hours in than anybody on our team. Um, he's – is very experienced in, and you're right, he's, you know, his grading. Braxton was a guy that was hard for Braxton. You know, other things were not hard, like making three guys miss and run 60 yards. He was blessed with that. Uh, JT doesn't have that skill set, but he's got a great sense of space on the field. And uh, we need to continue to utilize him more, and I think you're going to see more and more as that we move forward, even more, where decision-making, that's JT's strengths. And I know you talk about the run-pass options. Is he just... Is that another thing that he's? We got to get better at that. We got to use it more. That's been a directive, and we're going to use that more. Okay. And then you just quickly mentioned the pass defense. Are some of the true freshmen there? Okuda or Wade? Are those potential guys? Wade's that can been help dinged or? up a little bit. He didn't practice last week. Uh, Okuda's scratching the surface of playing time. Sheffield is getting better. He had his best week of practice last week, and I know it's his third year in college, but he has not had a lot of experience. And Ward's got to continue to get better. So those are, those are the guys that are going to – we keep moving forward. And Damon Arnett. Damon Arnett was more of a nickel back type guy, and he's getting better as well. Coach, thank you very Thanks, much. guys. Your number one source for sports, 97.1. The Fan.